Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Music and Education on the American Music Channel. I am Tiffany. And I am Andrew. And today we have a very exciting program prepared for all of you. The topic of tonight's episode is non-music professionals with musical backgrounds. We will be interviewing several successful members of the local Ann Arbor community on their experiences with music and the role it has played in their careers, as well as their views on the importance of music education. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. An education in music can be a part of a successful career in any field or profession. Our video seeks to explore the ways in which music has affected the lives and careers of successful members of a variety of professions, thereby demonstrating one way that teaching music is vital to the overall education of future generations. This video features all the people you just saw. Hi, my name is Mike. I work here at the University of Michigan. I'm a professor of radiology at the medical school and a pediatric radiologist at the Children's Hospital. I also play bassoon. I'm Chris Gentile. Uh, I currently work in Ann Arbor, Michigan at Google in online sales and operations. I come from an arts administration background. Uh, My formal music education has been rather sparse. And actually I started in fifth grade as a singer and continue that all throughout high school and college. And then I started uh, playing woodwinds in the, towards the end of eighth grade. Started on clarinet and then got drafted to play bassoon. And then I've been playing since then. I've been performing in choirs since the age of seven, professional choirs. And as well as been trained uh, in college in music, composition, theory. My first lesson in music was from my father. One day I sat down at the piano and just started banging away. Well, really, uh, just being able to perform in many groups at uh, a, a pretty high level, I thought. And even while I was still in high school, uh, I was recruited by a local college to play in a woodland quintet because they didn't have a bassoon, so that was a great opportunity for me. Most memorable part of my music education was probably the beginning part. It was probably learning as a seven, eight-year-old how to read music. Well, like I talked about before, there was the ear stretching that I did with my father, George. Basically, any musical memory that I have of my father is the most meaningful to me. So is music important in your life today? Definitely. I always knew that music was going to be central to my life. So the first thing I ever wanted to do was be a rock star. And I still find ways to bring my music and everything I've learned from being a musician, training as a musician, performing as a musician, into my day job. Music will always be important. Music is my life. Of course, I did other things while I was alive. But that was always to supplement the time I spent on music. Uh, specifically, I'm a pediatric radiologist, so I work with children, and I'm at the Children's Hospital over at the Medical Center. Currently, I work in the technology sector for Google, uh, where I work on Google's online advertising platform, and I'm a manager, and my day-to-day -day duties include managing a team um, who work with clients uh, of Google's uh, advertising program. So, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm basically utilizing all of the creative aspects of my music performance and music education in terms of working with people, learning how to harmonize with people, um, learning how to blend with people, and helping them basically perform to the highest level they can. Well, when I was alive, I was an insurance man. I started in a position that earned me $15 a week, but in the peak of my career, I co-owned a company called Ives & Myrick with my business partner, Julian Myrick. My focus in this business is to provide life insurance plans to people with means. Can you tell us how you decided to choose this career path, given your education? It was easier than music. <laughs> really? And, uh, I had, uh, <laughs> I had started uh, uh, 
all the way through school, I thought I wanted to go to science. I was interested in music, but I was interested in science. And then uh, a very influential teacher told me one time she thought I should be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And then so that entered my mind. I was like kids, so I was always interested in the pediatrics aspect. So I actually entered college with the idea of, of being a pediatrician. And I'm sort of along those lines now. Kind of like in my music career, I'm always looking for bigger challenges, uh, bigger stages to play, bigger audiences, and in my current role at Google, it's a large audience with millions and millions of users and just a ton of advertisers that, that my group here helps serve. Um, and it's just a huge challenge. I actually chose not to have a musical career based on a bit of advice from my father. He told me that it was better to have a career outside the profession of music because if you're a performing musician, you have to sell your music. If you have to sell your music, you have to think of sounds that people will buy. If you're creating music solely for the purpose of selling it, you're missing the point of creating music. Well, I think it's helped me overall as a person. Now, there are a few specific things that I, that I often allude to. Uh, as part of my job, I have to uh, uh, be involved sometimes with giving lectures to groups. Um, it can be at the university, it can be at meetings, it can be international. And in many ways, I find that there's a very, it's a performance in a sense when, when you're giving a talk because you're trying to convey an ideas or, or some concepts. And it's no different if you're performing music, you're trying to convey something. I think a few things from my music career have contributed to my success um, throughout my life. I think one has been uh, willingness to risk and, and create new things. And you know, as musicians in our training, but also in our performance, we're taking risks all the time. I think also discipline. I think musicians practice uh, more routinely and harder than, than most people I know. I mean, musicians and athletes are, you know, I think primed for success in roles where discipline and performance on a day-to-day -day basis are really important. And the third thing I would say is, um, is spirit, I think. I think at some level, all musicians were driven by the spirit, the excitement to play, um, a passion, a love for what we do, and that's been really important in my career um, in terms of bringing passion to the table in whatever I do. And so those are the three things that have driven me. I think my business model was always based more on my transcendentalist upbringing than my music lessons. There's much emphasis on perfecting yourself when you associate with the Transcendentalists. They're a very hard-working group. Although the importance of self-improvement based on hard work was definitely a theory that improved my music. It's not such a huge leap to consolidate that philosophy of life with what music demands of a person. So maybe it was the consolidation of those two parts of my life that made me so successful. I think it's very important. And I, I think that uh, if they're going to, if that's going to be cut out, I think th there's going to be a, a big loss. And I think here at the university, uh, a, a testament to that is, is is basically if you look at some like the groups that I play in, the Campus Symphony is a, is an organization which is specifically set up for non-music majors. So the majority of the players are students, graduate and undergraduate, but there are also some of us from various parts of the university that are faculty or staff or the university community who've been playing in it for a number of years. And the fact that these people, you know, perform and perform pretty well, um, I, I think shows that, you know, music's important to them too. I think music and arts are absolutely critical to a child's education. Um, music and arts education is an important way that children, that kids, that older adults even, can expand out of their comfort zones, uh, learn how to create where there's uncertainty, 
learn how to express emotion and develop their emotional intelligence, learn how to make sense of difficult problems and challenges. Thank you.